Uh, well, I guess I'm not going to get that much sun today. It's going to be in and out of kind of some overcast, and some trees, and sun's gradually moved over to the southern hemisphere, so to speak, to make it easier for fall to be here in winter. Uh, but boy, I tell you, <laughs> when you're when you throw your back out and you're in pain, it just makes everything so much slower. You know, you learn to slow down, put the back brace back on, do your toning exercises to keep your abdominals and your back muscles straight, you know, so everything can work together for good to those that are called according to his purpose. And God causes the body jointly fit together in such a way that it's designed to handle a certain amount of stress. But then when you get carried away and you go dancing and you just have a lot of fun, <laughs> you reap what you sow. But God loves me and he's always with me. So even when oh, I throw my back out and it takes a good week to recover, <laughs> you know, you can always turn to your father in heaven who looks down upon you and doesn't chastise you, but has compassion upon us and recognizes that we're flesh and blood, that we're not, you know, holy, really, the way we are, because we're born in sin and we were conceived in sin and we'll die in sin. But that one day, and it'll be a day after we are gone, but one day our incorruption will put on or our corruption will put on incorruption and our mortality will put on immortality and we'll go from this temporal life to an eternal one because you see God didn't create you to be in fellowship with him for a short period of time but he wanted to be walking with you and talking with you always and we call it an attitude of prayer but the reality is a realization of relationship you know something that we should be able to constantly have knowing that God sees all he doesn't sleep you know he that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps and when we recognize that we know that he's always here because he's inside us by his spirit but he's always there because he's the father and he rules and reigns from the highest heaven and that he's always working with us as Jesus is our high priest but also the head of the body of Christ the the groom of the bride you know the one that we become one with and as such you know that comfort of knowing the Father Son and Spirit in unity as one being working with us comforts us and strengthens us in our time of need because one day even our pain will be set aside and our sorrow our suffering and our weakness of the flesh. O oh Lord, we bless thee and thank thee for their keeping power. Yes, kept by the power of God as a promise and an assurance of both joy and beauty for the believing soul. Excuse me. The keeping that means security, safety, is wonderful. There is, too, the keeping that implies life, freshness, purity, the keeping kept unspotted from the world. Then there is the keeping that I ensure to those of whom I speak as the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth, but, the, but if the salt has lost its savor, it is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Only in very close contact with me is the keeping power realized. That keeping power which maintains the salt at its freshest and best and also preserves from corruption that portion of the world in which I place it. What a work! Not by activity in this case, but simply by its existing is its quality. So you see, no matter where you are or where you go, how you feel or what you do, you are salt. You are light. You are placed where you are, as you are, the way you are, because God in you causes all around you to be preserved. But it is God in you. It isn't anything special of you. Though, you know, some people like to 
try to build up a person's, you know, poor self-esteem for some reason by saying, oh, you know, God loves you so much and, you know, you need to treat yourself like you're special and that you're whatever. Well, okay, God died for you, you know, thank you, get over it now, go on, you know, I mean, you're a child of God, so get over it and go on. But sometimes I think some people take it and run with it and get carried away where they think they're super special. Well, no, you're on an equal plane with everyone else. <laughs> You're not God's favorite, you know, you're just one of his favorite. <laughs> favorite. And because he died for you, because he loves you, that is enough. You don't have to be the extra special or the super unique and make yourself that way, whether by wearing a flashy kind of bright colored sweatsuit. Or by just simply having a big nose or being called the chosen or whatever it may be or being of a certain racial tone. It's not what you are so much as who is in you. And once you know that, then it's all about him and not about you. And frankly, that gives you great comfort because there are days when you just don't feel like you're up to it. <laughs> and maybe today is one of those days. So if it is, hey, rejoice. I've been here before. And I'm sure to be here again. But in the day that, like my back being thrown out and the suffering pain apart, you will pass through it. And when you come out on the other side, you'll be glad that he was with you all the way through it. He never left you.